So good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Sajni Shroff, and I'll be talking about decoding the superficial vascular changes in glaucoma using the OCTA. So we'll be answering these questions in this talk. The first one being, is the vasculature affected in glaucoma? If so, when does the vessel density reduction occur? What is the diagnostic ability of OCTA in glaucoma? Can OCTA uh, I won't be starting my video right now because uh, my audio will uh, become patchy. Sure. Yeah. So can OCTA identify progression and a couple of case examples invading severities of glaucoma? I think it's not moving forward. Dr. Shroff, any problem? Yeah, it's not moving forward now. Let me just stop share and yeah, share. Yeah, reshare again. it again. Yeah. Okay, so coming to the first question, is the vasculature affected in glaucoma? Yes, it is. This is a picture of, uh, this is a normal visual field with a normal RMFL. And the heat map on the OCTA showing the normal uh, capillary density. So in this is a glaucoma patient who has a superior field effect with an inferior RNFL defect. And it shows an in red reduction in the vessel density in the inferior peripapillary area corresponding to the superior uh, field effect on visual field and inferior RNFL on the OCT. I'll just start my pointer. So if, the, so if there is a vessel density reduction in glaucoma, when does this vessel density reduction occur? So we know that the structural changes in RNFL precede functional loss to visual fields. But does the vascular changes also precede visual loss? So to answer this question, we have conducted a cross-sectional study on primary open-angle glaucoma eyes with defects which were restricted to only one hemifield and study the RNFL and vessel density changes corresponding to the perimetrically normal MEP. So for example, in this patient with a superior arcuate defect in the right eye, there's an obvious reduction in the inferior peripapillary vessel density and the inferior RNFL thinning. So in our study, we measured the vessel density in the superior peripapillary area and compared these uh, vascular and structural measurement with those of the healthy eyes. So our study showed that the vessel density in the peripapillary and macular scans showed a reduction compared to the normal in the parametrically normal sector. So this showed that the vascular changes definitely precede visual field effects in glaucoma. The extent of the vessel density reduction and RF RNFL thinning varied. So whenever there's a new uh, whenever there's a new machine which is introduced, the intravisit repeatability, intervisit reproducibility of OCTA or any machine is constantly done. So in OCTA, the coefficient of repeatability along the peripapillary sectors and the macular range between four to seven percent. In glaucoma eyes, it showed worse intervisit repeatability than healthy eyes. So what is the clinical implication of these values? This means that any change in the vessel density of less than 7% would fall within the test retest variability and would be clinically insignificant. So OCTA is a new machine. So we, we always have to compare it with the existing standards. So the existing standards in glaucoma care is visual field and uh, OCT RNFL. So there's a strong association which has been found in inferior peripapillary and macular sector with visual fields. And in glaucoma eyes with high myopia and in those with advanced glaucoma, the association of visual field parameters seem to be stronger with OCTA than compared to OCT RNFL. When we compare the OCTA with OCT RNFL measurements, the average coefficient of variation of the OCT measurements was 1.5, while that of OCTA was 4%. So this implies that the OCTA measurements were less reproducible than the OCT measurements. So the uh, area under the curve, AUC, of both peripapillary vessel density and the RNFL thickness range between 0.85 to 0.95. So how does this reflect clinically? When we compare the ONH region, the peripapillary region, and the macular region on structural measurement and vessel density measurements, it was shown that the OCTA is not superior to OCT measurements in diagnosing POH. 
So though the question of which came first, the RNFL loss or vessel density reduction has not been answered conclusively yet. However, the relationship between OCTA, OCT, and visual field relationships have been studied. So it's been shown that the measurement flow with the vessel density was found to be lower than the flow with structural OCT measurement. So in the study, we can see that the RNFL thickness and the GCC, the flow was at a lower level, minus 17.5 and th uh, minus 12.9. But compared to that of an OCTA, the floor level was much lower, that was minus 25.8. So what does this mean? This this means that the OCTA may be potentially a better tool to monitor progression in advanced glaucoma. So Greta et al. studied uh, the OCT measurements in different glaucoma severities. So they studied the OCT RNFL, OCT GC IPL, and the vessel density by OCTA. So all the three parameters showed a significant attenuation with increasing levels of severity. But when they performed a pairwise analysis, only the vessel density was able to discriminate the between each severity level, while the RNFL and the GCIPL were not able to differentiate between moderate and severe glaucoma. So coming to our next question, can OCTA identify progression? So this was a study by Shoji et al. who have done a longitudinal study comparing the rate of macular vessel density loss in POAG and in healthy eyes. So they found that the rate of vessel density loss was significantly different from zero when compared to that of in the POAG eyes compared to healthy. However, the rate of GCC loss was not significant in any of the groups. So if you can see in this, the vessel density has dropped from 50 to 44, but there was not a significant change in the RNFL or the macular thickness. This study was done for a short period of around 12 months. This was another study done in our hospital where a study on 18 POAG eyes with a disc hemorrhage were followed up for an average of 2.6 years. This showed a progressive RNFL and a GCIPL loss in the disc hemorrhage sector and not in the other sectors. But in the OCTA, it showed progressive peripapillary and parapobial vessel density reduction in both the disc hemorrhage and the non-disc hemorrhage regions. So this was a study which uh, showed that the lower baseline vessel density was associated with a faster RNFL thinning. So in this study, 132 eyes were studied with mild to moderate glaucoma and were followed up for two years. It showed that with every one percentage lower vessel density at optic nerve and macula, showed a decrease of 0 0.07 and 0 0.09 faster rate of decline in RNFL thickness. So there's another study which showed the larger FAZ area was associated with RNFL and GCIPL progression. So coming to a couple of case examples, this is an example. Uh, this is a optic, large optic disc showing the large cup to disc ratio. It was a normal RNFL and a normal visual field. So this shows that the peripapillary OCTA report shows that there was the normal radial peripapillary capillaries on the angiography image and the heat map with the vessel densities. This is an example too of a 61 year old female, right eye PACG and the left eye PAC. Her angles were occludable in both the eyes and an LPI had been done. The right eye disc was a medium sized disc with a 0.75 cup to disc ratio with an inferior temporal RNFL defect. So we can see that there is an inferior RNFL defect on, uh, on seeing the optic disc image. The RNFL uh, on OCT RNFL, we can see the thinning. And we can also see on the OCTA images of a reduction in the vessel density. So we can see the reduction in the vessel density here. and an inferior temporal reduction on the index. So the example three was a 53-year-old patient with a capsular glaucoma, pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma in the left eye with 34 pressures. The angles were open. A trabeculectomy had been done. The disc showed a medium-sized disc with a 0.9 cup to disc ratio with a bipolar notch. We can see that it showed an advanced uh, uh, it was an advanced glaucoma on the visual field and the RNFL and a, in a decrease in the vessel density. 
So when we compare all these side by side, when we put the severity side by side, we can see that this was the normal. So this was the normal. Glaucoma showed a focal defect and a diffuse defect on the OCTA. This was an example of two PACG eyes, two, uh, two PACG patients who had similar visual uh, fields at presentation. So this was similar visual field at presentation. However, we noticed that the first patient had a higher rate of progression compared to the second patient. So when we looked at the vessel density, we saw that the first patient had a reduced vessel density of 39.5%, while the second patient had 49.59%. So when we uh, brief, to add a note briefly on the comparison of different types of glaucoma, all glaucomas, whether be it POAG, pseudo exfoliation, and closure or NTG, showed a reduction in the uh, vessel densities. In POAG, it showed the peripapillary vessel density reduction was found to be significantly more than in the macular region. Pseudo exfoliation glaucoma, the reduction of the vessel density was more than in POAG. NTG, normal tension glaucoma, it's, uh, the patho uh, pathogenesis is assumed to be a vascular uh, pathology. But most of the studies have shown that there was no difference in the OCTA measurement seen between NTG and uh, high pressure glaucoma as POH. So in summary, OCTA provides unique information about vascular changes in glaucoma that was not available before. OCTA also appears to be a better tool than OCT RMFL to uh, monitor progression, especially in moderate to advanced glaucoma. OCTA also provides useful information about the risk for glaucoma progression. Thank you.